So in this video, we're still talking about what happens when a wave encounters a barrier. But in this video, you're going to have a slightly different barrier. Oops, I, I pasted it twice. There we go. So this time, instead of tying my end of the string to the brick, I, I, I put a loop on it here. And I, I looped it around this pole. So, so this pole is still holding on to the string, but, but the point is free to move up and down. And so once again, we have our blue wave pulse moving to the right. Moving to the right. So what happens this time as the wave as the wave pulse gets closer and closer to this to this barrier. Oops. Still getting used to this whole drawing on the computer thing, but all right. So right here our blue wave pulse is just just about to interact with this barrier. Here's the loop. Here's the rest of the string. So let's look at this point right here, this last point on the string. So just like always, just like in the past videos, this bit of string here feels the bit of string just to the left of it moving up. And there, and because of that, it feels this upward force, making it want to go upward. Now in the last video, it was tied to a brick so it couldn't move anywhere. And that and that brick applied a force downward to stop it from moving. But in this video, this this point is free to move. And and not only is it free to move like a, a normal piece of string, but there's actually no pieces of string to the right of it. So normally, as soon as this piece of string would start moving upward, it would have to tug the piece of string to the to its right upward as well, and and it would be it would be exerting a force upward on that piece of string. So if we re review Newton's third law, we know that that if if this green piece of string, I'll make I'll make another piece of string, make a red piece of string, this imaginary piece of string that isn't here in this example. But if the string continued on, this would be another piece of string. So if this green piece of string moves upward, it's going to pull upward on this red piece of string. But because of Newton's third law, we know that if the green piece of string exerts the force up on the red piece of string, the red piece of string also exerts a force downward on the green piece of string. So essentially, all I'm really saying is that this green piece of string feels the same force upward, but it doesn't have to drag the rest of the string along with it. And then we end up with the situation that this, the, the piece of string that is attached to this, to this barrier and allowed to move, it actually goes higher than it would if, if the string were to continue. So redraw it here in that, in that format. Oops, redrawing that situation where the, the string actually goes higher. And to, to be consistent, and if you watched the last video, you might see where this is going. I'm going to draw it in purple. Should, should attach it with this ring here. And the, and the part attached to the ring will then fall back down. And when it falls back down, it will create another wave pulse moving, moving backwards, moving to the left. And that, moving to the left. And I'm drawing it in red. And I'm drawing it in red because I'm going to make an analogy just like we did, or make a comparison like we did in the last video to a case that we've already already looked at. I'm going to scroll up here and redraw this situation. So 
So we have our blue wave propagating to the right, and our red wave propagating to the left. This is from, from the first video on wave interference. We said that this, this piece of string here would actually get launched up twice as hard as it normally would have because both pieces of string on, on either side of it are both, are both pulling it up. And we end up with a situation where you just have a large bump I'm not I'm not calling this a wave pulse because this this itself isn't actually moving it's just here as as they're together but I'm calling these wave pulses because they they're moving along the string this is just just one slice of time and so we draw our our gray dotted line which I cannot draw And just to, to be thorough, I'll draw this final state here with our red wave pulse moving to the left. Oops. And the blue wave pulse moving to the right. Here we go. And then continue our separation of these two of these two halves. So again we have this situation where if we just look at what's on the left side of the string, just look at what's to the left of this or, or what's to the left of this of this dotted line or to the left of this barrier, we have what looks like the same situation. And so here here this went higher because another piece of string was pulling on it. And here, this went higher because because it didn't have to drag the next bit of string along with it. So it actually experienced more net force upward and and went higher. And so, well, maybe maybe this isn't that convincing to you that that another piece of string pulling up is the same as no piece of string doing anything. And and that and the way I've argued this, that's probably they probably are slightly different. But but you can agree that that this will go higher since it doesn't have to drag something along, and then it'll end up looking the same, the same overall situation. These might have slightly different different heights since since in a real in a real string there will be a loss of energy, and 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 we're talking in very ideal terms in this whole thing. But just to give an intuitive sense of what's going on here when the wave hits a barrier, the about about the you know what all that matters is what's going on at this point, what's going on at the boundary of this wave. The conditions at the boundary are really what make the difference in how the wave acts. And and if you'd like if you'd like a more um, a more precise a way of talking about this in future videos we'll get to do lots of math with waves so so stay tuned see you in the next video